All right, guys, let's look at question 10 of the November 2022 paper, paper one. And question 10 reads as follows. 10.1 says A, B, and C are three events. The probabilities of these events or any combination of them occurring is given in the Venn diagram below. Now, key thing here, we're not given numbers of items. We are given probabilities. And we know that the total number of the probabilities that you can ever have here, the total number is going to always be one. The total number of the sample space has a value of one. That's what all probabilities sum up to all the time. Okay, so now 10.1.1 says, if it is given that the probability that at least one of these events will occur is not 0.893, calculate the values of Y, the probability that none of the events will occur. So according to the statement, we're told that the chances of everything that we see inside the circles occurring, okay? That means it is given that the probability that at least one of them occurs, which means A happens, or B happens, or C happens, okay, one of them happen, right, is equal to 0 0.893. We're gonna work out what the chances of none of them happening is going to be. So like I said, when you add all the things up, you must get the answer one. So Y is going to be one minus not 0.893, and this answer is just going to be 0 0.107, okay? 0 0.107, or if you want, you can write the 0 0.11 when you round off to two decimal places, as the statement says in your question papers, okay? Now, uh, next question says we need to find the value of X, the probability that all of these events happen. Okay, cool, that's not uh, complicated. We know that the chances of all of them happening, all right, the chances of all of them happening was given to us as 0 0.893. So that means when you sum everything up, this guy, plus this, plus this, plus, plus, if you add all of them up, you need to get the number 0 0.893. We know that this one is 0 0.107, but apparently if you add it as well, and you add everything else in the circles, the answer should give you one because all probabilities must always sum up to one okay cool so i think i'm just going to make it easy by just saying to myself well i already know what the circles the sums of the probabilities in the circles are going to end up to it's not 0.893 so i'm going to say okay to, to get x okay the sum of the probability the sum of all probabilities should be equal to one that means uh, the 0 0.05 you add that with the 0 0.15, you add with another 0 0.05 in the circles, and then you add X, and then you add, just adding all of them, all of them, okay, up until uh, 0 0.183, they will end up giving you that number that we have there of 0 0.893, okay, 0 0.893, I'm excluding Y in this case, okay? But if I edit that Y as well, let's add Y as well and make it easier for everybody to follow what I'm saying here. We want all the probabilities inside the Venn diagram will amount to one, including Y. Let me just plus Y, okay? And then the other ones that I didn't put here. All of them up, edit, 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 all of them up, you're going to get the answer that you're looking for. So the only thing we don't know is X. And I think we can be able now to claim that X, according to this, if you just use your calculator, you'll end up with the answer 0 0.16, okay? Very simple. All right, now the follow-up question here says to us here, 10.1.2, determine the probability that at least two of the events will take place. At least two of the events will take place. So when you say to me at least two, you mean two or more. So I'm looking for all the parts where the probability happens twice or three times. So let's go and find all the chances. That's the probability that you get two or more events happening. Where is two or more happening? Okay, let's go and look in the diagram. Find all the parts where there's two intersections or more than two intersections. So this one is one, sorry, I don't want that. This is one of them happening, I don't want that. This is one of them happening, I don't want those. What do I want? Aha, I want these ones. Two things are happening here, A and B are happening there. In this case, A and C are happening, 
in this case, B and C are happening. So those ones that I've circled is when two events happen at the same time. But then they said two or more because they said at least two. So that means two or more. So we're going to add our friend 0. Um, I think it's 0 0.16 here. We worked it out as 0 0.16. So all those four numbers are going to make up our answer, right? So we're just going to have to add all of them up and we should get an awesome answer from that. Let's see what will happen when we add all those up. Okay, so the first one is 0 0.15. The second one is 0 0.1. The third one is 0 0.2. And now x also is part of the story, and we worked it out as 0 0.16. And when you add all of these things up, I think 0 0.15, 0 0.16, all of them combined, they just give you that answer of exactly 0 0.61. All right, so that's the chances of two of them happening. Okay, two or more of them happening. Beautiful. All right, now 10.1.3 is asking us, uh, events B and C independent. Justify your answer. Now we should know for independent events, they need to satisfy the following relationship. The probability of event B multiplied by the probability of event C must be the same as the probability of event B and C. Okay, this is what we need to know. Now we're just going to try and test the left hand side and the right hand side independently and see are they equal or not. If that's true, then we will say the events are independent. So now we need to know what is the probability of B, we need to know what is the probability of C, and then we need to know what is the probability of B and C so that we can be able to uh, compare them, right? Now I'm going to go back to the event diagram and then we're going to check quickly what is the probability of B and what is the probability of C and where is the intersection. So when you go back to the Venn diagram, you will notice that if we are interested in finding B and C, let's say this is uh, event C, okay? And then we've got, of course, event B somewhere here, right? The intersection is where B and C are happening, and it's 0 0.16 as well as uh, 0 0.2. So now when you combine 0 0.16 and 0 0.2, you're going to get 0 0.36. So this 0 0.36 is the probability of both B and C. Now, if I want the probability of B, I need everything that is going to be in the green circle. So we already have, if you look closely, if I'm just zooming specifically on this green circle here, right? Um, B will be everything that is inside that green circle. We already know we've got a 0 0.36, but there's the 0 0.1 as well as 0 0.183. And if you combine those, you're going to get the value 0 0.2. Eight, three. And of course, if you combine with 0 0.36, you'll get what is going to be uh, the value for the probability of getting event B. Now, similarly, for the event C, we already have 0 0.36. The only missing values are 0 0.15, okay? Because we're interested in the yellow circle now, this entire circle. We want to know what lies in it. Already we have accounted for the 0 0.16 and the 0 0.2, which is where the 0 0.36 comes from. Now we want to know what is 0 0.15 added with 0 0.05 going to give us, and we get the value 0 0.2. So then when we combine that 0 0.2 with 0 0.36, we get the probability of getting event C. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my calculation and sub in those values. So what do we see here? Well, we know now when we combine all the values for the probability of event B, it's going to give us the number not 0.643. And then when you work out the sum for the probability of uh, the event C, you're going to get 0 0.56. When you add all those values up, and the probability of B and C, which is where they intersect each other, comes out as 0 0.36. Now, when we test the left-hand side, let's test the left-hand side to see what value do we get when we do that calculation, okay? So the probability of event B times the probability of event C is equal to 0 0.643 multiplied by 0 0.56. Okay, we multiply those two values and then we want to see what answer we're getting when we are doing that multiplication. And I promise you, when you take 0 0.643 and you multiply it with 0 0.56, it comes out as 0 0.36. 0, 0, 008. Now, when you round off to two decimal places and compare it with the probability of uh, A and C, I mean of B and C, 
uh, we can clearly see that we're getting 0 0.36 here, which happens to be the same as the probability of event uh, uh, B and C. So since the product of the probability of B and the probability of C gives us the same number as the probability of B and C, we can then say, therefore, they are independent, okay? They are independent since uh, they actually satisfy the formula we need to satisfy when we're testing for uh, independence. 10.2 says a four-digit code is required to open a combination lock. The code must be even numbered and may not contain the digits zero or one. Digits may not be repeated. Okay, cool. So a couple of important things to keep note of here. We are told that the code must be even. We are also told that the digits may not contain zero and one. So zero and one are off. We're not gonna have those, right? So we wanna know how many four digit codes, okay? How many possible four digit combinations are there to open the lock? Okay, so let's think about it. We have zero, we have one, we have two, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So these are all the digits we normally uh, could work with. But there's a condition here. Condition one says you can't use zero and one. So these guys are off. That leaves me with only eight possible digits that I can pick from. I'm trying to create a code of exactly four digits, right? So I'm gonna set myself up for that. So how do you set yourself up for four digits? So one, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, there's another condition here that says digits may not be repeated. If it means if you use something, you can only use it once. But then the important one is the one that says that it must be even, which means at the end, your last digit, the digit that you can use at the end can either be two, four, or six. Or eight. So there are four possible numbers that I can pick from, right? Or eight. So these are the only numbers that I can choose from to decide what I'm going to use in my in my code. Okay? Four possible ways of uh, writing the last part. Because the only way a number is going to look even is if the last digit is an even number. Okay? Very important for us to keep that in mind. Now, what does that mean? That means there are four ways of writing the last part. There are four possible numbers that I can pick from. But now if I've taken one of them, remember I'm not taking all of them. If I've taken one of them, I'll be down to seven numbers to pick from. So there'll be seven options that I can take from here because the other ones that I didn't choose at the end will be available as options for the first digit. And then I'll have six digits left and then I'll also have uh, five digits that I can pick from in order. So it's gonna be six times five times four multiplied by the seven that is in the beginning because um, we've got four digits, always start with the restriction. So we're starting here because this is where we were restricted. They said. Always, always, always make sure you start with the restriction. They said, we need it to be even. There are four numbers that I can pick from. That is where I'm starting. After I've taken one of those eight digits that I can pick from, the other ones that I didn't select for the last position are available to choose for the other places. So that means I'll be down to seven digits that I can pick from because I'm not allowed to repeat a digit, okay? And then down to six and then down to five. So very important. So seven times six times five times four, gives you an answer of 840. So there's a total of 840 uh, combinations that are possible that we can create with this particular interesting story. Okay, now the last one says, calculate the probability that you will open the lock at the first attempt if it is given that the code is greater than 5,000 and the third digit is two. So the third digit must be two. Okay, very interesting. So the third digit must be two. Okay, there's a total of 840 that you can pick from. So this is the total of the sample space. Don't forget that. Remember when you are calculating probability, it's always something divided by the total. Okay, so the probability would be uh, something, we need the number here. It's going to be a number divided by 840. So this number is a number that we are interested in. This is how we work out probabilities, right? Probability is going to be something divided by 840 because those are all possible combinations we can be able to create in this case. Okay, but now what are they saying to us here? They're saying, oh, well, you need to have a code that looks like it's bigger than 5,000. Remember, we still have four digits. One, two, three, four. We still have two, four, six, or eight to choose from here. Yeah? Now, there's a, an extra restriction of what you can choose in the beginning because 
If it's gonna start with five, it's gonna look like a number bigger than 5,000. It can only start with five, or start with six, or start with seven, or start with eight, or start with nine. So those are the options that I have to decide what I'm going to write in the beginning. Okay, it must start with five, it must start with six, it must start with seven, it must start with eight, or it must start with nine. It will, if it starts with a four, like if my code was four, whatever, it looks like 4,000 and no longer looking like the number 5,000. Remember, that's very important. They want it to look like a number that is bigger than 5,000. Okay, so that's why I'm saying the first digit has to be either five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, we're not allowed to repeat these digits, okay? So um, there's an interesting here yeah, restriction that says that uh, the third digit must be two. So the third digit has to be two. So that means two will take this position. There's only one way of writing this part because there's only one two in this list, okay? There's only one way of completing that, 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 that area there. And then that means two falls off as an option at the end for our even story, all right? So we're going to have three now. We're down to three possible options of deciding what we are writing there, okay? Very important. Now, um, let's see what possible combinations we can have here. Now, the combination that we're going to have, because you have to be cognizant of the fact that the, the numbers cannot be digit repeated. Like, we've got this problem. There's ones, if it starts with six, it cannot end with six. You can't repeat it. If it starts with eight, you cannot end with eight because you're not allowed to repeat the eight, okay? So be careful of that. So what does that mean? That means I will have codes that do what? I will have codes that start with seven or nine or five, okay? The other ones that are not even. I will have these combinations. Or I will have combinations that start with what? The ones that start with six must not end with six. And the ones that start with eight will not have to end with eight because I'm trying to iron that out and say we're not allowed to repeat the six and the eight because we can only use them once, okay? So the combinations that start with seven, nine, or five, okay, this is what's gonna happen. They will have a two. So there's only one way of writing this part because two must be the third digit. And in the begin, in the end, there are three things that I can pick from because if two is used on the third digit, it's not available for the last digit. There's only four, six, and eight that I can use. And then um, after that, of course, I will be left with three numbers that I can pick from, seven, five, or nine. So there's three ways of writing this part. And then after I've used them, then I'll have five other digits that I can pick from to decide what I'm writing in that part. So there's actually 45 combinations that we can have that will start with seven, five, or nine, okay? And have two in the third position and be even uh, at the same time. That has to be added with the combinations that start with what? That start with six. Now the combinations that start with six are also very interesting in the sense that uh, they will have a one here because it's only one six. There's a two, position of two has been taken also. There's one way of doing that. The six falls off. The two has also fallen off for the even part. So I'm down to only two things that I can pick from, four and eight to make my code even. And then once I'm done with that, all the other remaining digits are available to choose uh, for, the, for the part uh, of the second digit. So there's five ways of doing this. And that gives us 10 codes that we can choose from. And then the ones that start with eight will do the same thing as well, okay? There'll be 10 of them because uh, eight and six are just single digits. So I'll definitely have that answer 10 here at the end as well. And then after this, I'll also have uh, to add all those and my final answer is going to come out as 65. But remember, we are looking for the probability. So we can now see the probability, okay? Probability will be equal to that 65 divided by the 840, which is the total of the sample space. And the answer to this is exactly 0 0.08. Okay, this is 0 0.08. If you're writing it in decimal form, if you wanted to write it as a fraction, it will be 13 divided by 868. All right, this is how you would analyze a question of probabilities that also involves the issue or ideas that revolve around counting principles.